Stephen E. Jones. Thanks. Right. <laughs> it's good to talk to you today, Sterling. A um, little circuit I have developed with others, and I have the schematic. I sent you the schematic in a little more detail. But basically, the power is coming from two AA batteries. These are rechargeable. And uh, a little 1 ohm resistor in series with the battery. So I can measure the input voltage and the input current. The voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor. And that gives me the input uh, power. I'm multiplying the input voltage times the input uh, current. And I get the instantaneous power, and that's actually the green trace here. So this little oscilloscope takes the input voltage um, and the uh, input current, multiplies these together, and you get the trace of the input power. Now we can you see this repeats itself, of course. And we get the frequency out of here, which is uh, uh, tip, it's running at about 2.8 uh, megahertz here. And let's see, let me adjust that. Let's recapture that. It should be uh, half that, so there we go. See, it, it has a little trouble picking up. There's so many. Let's get the voltage a little bigger here on this. There's so many oscillations. I just want to pick out the primary oscillation. Yeah. So the frequency is uh, right around. There we go. Still having trouble. Yeah, but about 2.8 megahertz, as we said. So. If you look now in a little more detail at the input power, which is the uh, green trace, you can see that it oscillates around zero. And uh, even though there's an offset here in the voltage going in, that's the uh, two two and a half volts going in. But the uh, the current is pulsed here. We're we're limiting the current. We only let it through in pulses. And I'll explain just a little bit how that's done. So the input power, which is the green trace, the instant, instantaneous power, oscillates around zero. And that's characteristic of this circuit, which differentiates it from a standard jewel thief circuit. This is similar to the jewel thief, but I've moved the um, toroid, the uh, magnetic um, bifiler wound uh, toroid, after the transistor instead of before. And so what you have now is the gating of the transistor is controlled by this tank circuit here. There's an um, inductor here and a capacitor here. And the inductor is over here and the capacitor is right there. And so <clears throat> this circuit controls the gating of the transistor and lets current through and lets then power through uh, just in pulses. So you see the power coming in in pulses here. Now, uh, what we want to do is make the output power, which is over on this leg, large, and the input power over here small. We want that ratio of output power to input power to be as large as possible. That's the uh, efficiency of the circuit, sometimes called the coefficient of performance. I prefer just efficiency, and we're trying to get that over one. That'd be nice, you know. <laughs> To have more output power than in, what that would mean is there's some outside source of energy coming in. I, I still believe in uh, the first and second laws of thermodynamics, so I think there must be some source of energy coming in when there's more output on this leg, which has the LED so you can see it, and a resistor here, and, and uh, we're pulsing the power through this output leg. And so, if there is more output power than input power, then to me that suggests there must be some outside source of energy. And once we prove that there's um, over unity, which means then more output power than input power, then we can find out with other experiments where this energy is coming from. So, the idea that I was, um, ha have been working on is looking at the input power which is the green waveform, and making that smaller. Now I can do that by adjusting uh, 
the various resistances, the capacitors, and so on in the circuit. Uh, <clears throat> the main thing that I'm redu uh, doing right now is actually, I've got one more resistor right here, which is this resistor. It's a variable resistor. And as I vary that, you can watch the, the green trace, the, the power. I don't know if you can see it. See, it goes way down. The light is still lit, but the input power goes from quite a large value down to just very little. And we can look at several of these traces, but it, it gets very small. So that's my idea. We're still putting power through the output leg, but we're limiting the input power. So, uh, and you can also change the uh, the amount of power that's dumped on the output circuit by varying this. There's a resistor here that we vary. And by varying that resistor, we can change the input power. Let's go back to a little more uh, input power here. So these are the two that I play with mainly, trying to tune the circuit. And then I vary this. You can see the... Uh, the LED changes in brightness. Once I get up in here, this is 10 kilo ohms uh, at the end, and it still glows, and down at the other end it's zero. So there's some variation, but it's it's not enormous. But you can see the variation in the power going in. Now the power going out, this is dumping across this output resistor here. So uh, now let me show you some results, starting if I could. Th this oscilloscope does give me a qualitative view, semi-quantitative, because I can integrate under the power curve and that gives me the energy, integrate with respect to time. And I look at the uh, output curve, the waveform for the output, and then I can uh, integrate that too. And I do, I've done a lot of that by hand, but you know, I just trust a lot better a state-of-the-art oscilloscope, which I have available at the university. I go up there and it gives me the waveform, which I'll show you the results now. And um, I'm going to be looking at the output power and the input power and comparing them. So that's what we want to do. By the way, this circuit is just another variation. Here I've replaced the LED, uh, replaced the LED with a diode. And so uh, I, I actually waste less power there. I'm, I'm looking at the power dumped on the output resistors is what I'm doing. So by replacing the LED with a simple diode, then I get more uh, power dumped on the, uh, on the output resistors. Okay, so that's the name of the game, varying things and uh, comparing the input power to the output power. Now let me just show you here. Again, this is the circuit that I sent to you, and people will have that, so that uh, uh, we don't need a circuit, right? Here we go. Uh, again, the well, they can study that. I'm hoping people will replicate. It's a very simple circuit. This one uh, is just very simple. You've got a small amount of current through a large resistor that hits the base, but most of that gating of the transistor comes from this tank circuit here, the inductor capacitor. And this thing resonates and so uh, that really is what determines the frequency of the entire system here. Uh, and then we look at the power that gets dumped this way. The, the diode is pointed in the correct direction, that way. <laughs> so we look at the, I call it recirculating power. We want as much power in the output over here as we can get. So I look at the voltage uh, drop across this resistor and then I look at the current. It's a 1 ohm resistor here. It's right here. I look at the uh, current in this output leg and the voltage drop across the this resistor which I can vary. I take it up to 9.7 volts. See the input power doesn't change very much. Looking at the input power there. This is down. Now at zero it does. At zero here then yes we see the input power changes but once I get up into 5 kilo ohms, 8 kilo ohms let's see we're up to 10 there 
then that up the input doesn't change much. That's the interesting thing about this. But the output power uh, does change, and so now we go to our sophisticated uh, oscilloscope, which is using the uh, Tektronics. This is the screenshot from the Tektronics. Here you see the input power. Let me see, let me get this correct. Yeah, both of these are actually the input power. This is just uh, about one cycle here, and this is a large number of cycles, something like uh, 25 cycles there. But you can see, again, you're getting this type of a pattern here. This is using the Tektronics scope. Now let's go to a large number of cycles. Uh, here we go. Here. And this is the input power over a large number of cycles. And this is the output power. Again, the input power is oscillating around zero. So you have it, uh, the voltage pushing and then you, you get these oscillations. So there's not much net input power. It's just sitting there oscillating whereas the output power is spiked. So here we have 79, uh, the, again the red curve is the power curve and we take the math mean of that, not the RMS, I could argue that, but uh, what we want is the mean power because that, that is the net power that's uh, coming out, is the net power going in. The net power coming out is 79.25 milliwatts, about 79 milliwatts the power going in is 10 milliwatts. See, so there's the, the output power is about uh, 7.9 times larger than the input power, according to the best scope I can get. Now let me show you one more result. This is uh, just taken earlier this month. The same system, but now tuning things and adjusting the, um, the, the resistances. I find that the voltage drop across the uh, output circuit. Whoops. Let me get that back. Here we go. Okay. Is, uh, is, is quite large and so the output power, now this is the output now being dumped on the output resistors, uh, a resistor, the output resistor. The output uh, uh, the output power is 0.92 watts. It's 921 milliwatts net. You can see that's spiking. Uh, so it's 921 milliwatts. The, the input power again is oscillating around zero and it's four milliwatts. So we're getting a lot more power out than we're putting in. And this is uh, again just the best uh, scope I can find. Now, <clears throat> having said that, you know, I do the work with my at home mostly and then I go to the university to use the state-of-the-art scope to, to get the numbers and I, I'm consistently getting more power out dumped on this output leg than there is power in coming through from the battery. And I, I, so I tried some other tricks. I thought, well, let's see. If the input power is so low then I should be able to put a battery here and let it run overnight and it shouldn't drop much in voltage and that's exactly what I observed. I used uh, in that case a, a single double A battery and uh, I let it run overnight uh, so just a little over nine hours later I came back and checked the voltage and it was the same voltage. This thing had been running the LED glowing all night long and so uh, you know, there's some output power there, there's resistances in the circuit, <laughs> and the voltage didn't drop. So that's a, a second test that I've done. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now is to replace this battery with a capacitor. I've already replaced this output resistor, which is over here, with a, uh, another capacitor. So I'm, I'm dumping the power, the output power, Instead of just dumping it into a resistor, I'm dumping it into uh, a capacitor. So this output power now is being dumped into a capacitor, and the uh, capacitor charges quite quickly. And so now I, I'm just in this at the stage where I'm uh, applying the input power with another capacitor, and then collecting the output power 
on a capacitor instead of just dumping it on a resistor. So, you know, you try different means of measurement. Uh, my feeling is that the results with the Tektronix 3032 are quite compelling. Uh, it doesn't mean I understand where this energy is coming from. I don't. But <laughs> it certainly shows repeatedly that the output power is, is greater than the input power. The output power here in this leg of the circuit is greater than the input leg coming from the battery. Takes the input voltage um, and the uh, input current, multiplies these together and you get the trace of the input power. Now we can see this repeats itself of course. And we get the frequency out of here where it in series with the battery. So I can measure the input voltage and the input current, the voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor. And that gives me the input uh, power, I'm multiplying the input voltage times the input uh, current. And I get the instantaneous power, and that's actually the green trace here. So this little oscilloscope, which is uh, It's running at about 2.8 uh, megahertz here. And let's see, let me adjust that. Let's recapture that. It should be uh, half that, so there we go. See, it, it has a little trouble picking up. There's so many. Let's get the voltage a little bigger here on this. There's so many oscillations, that I just want to pick out the primary oscillation. Yeah. Stephen E. Jones. Thanks. Right. <laughs> it's good to talk to you today, Sterling. A um, little circuit I have developed with others, and I have the schematic. I sent you the schematic in a little more detail. But basically, the power is coming from two AA batteries, these are rechargeable and uh, a little one ohm resistor